Good morning, everyone. Um, good to be back here at the University of Oulu, my alma mater. My name is Anna Ruth, and I work as coordinator for Publication Forum, the Federation of Finnish Learned Societies. And I'm going to talk about predatory open access in general and more specifically uh, in respect to the Publication Forum classification. So first, briefly about the basics. Most of you maybe know that uh, Publication Forum is a classification system to support the quality assessment of research output. And uh, as of last year, it has been used as a quality indicator for publications in the university's funding model. And the publications count for 13% of the public funding for universities. And in this system, both foreign and domestic journals um, or publication journals are rated by expert panels into three categories, of which three is the highest. And also there is a category zero, uh, which includes all publication channels that have been evaluated but do not meet one or several of the criteria. And currently our database uh, consists of more than uh, 31,000 active journal series, conferences and book publishers. And uh, in the system, open access journals and publication channels are evaluated using the same criteria as any other. So not upgraded or downgraded. Uh, to support the evaluation, the expert panels have a number of impact indicators and indexing data at their disposal, like indexing data from Web of Science, Scopus, Erich Plus, um, and some others, like Directory of Open Access Journals, Sherpa Romeo. And one of these is Beale's List, as he says, of potential, possible, or probable predatory scholarly open access publishers and journals. Uh, the person behind Beale's list is Jeffrey Beale, who is an academic librarian at the University of Colorado, Denver. Actually, Beale's list is two lists, so there are separate list, lists for publishers and standalone journals. Also, he has a list of misleading metrics. And by predatory, he means publishers and journals that collect article processing charges, so called an open access funding model, mm, without following through careful peer review or other duties of a scholarly publisher. There is a, a <coughs> list of criteria on his blog where, where it can be found. Um, Bill is often criticized because it's generally known that he uh, favors these traditional big publishers and is doubtful about the quality of open access journals. But nonetheless, his list is quite well known and used. And in our system, we mark a journal as predatory if the journal's name or the publisher, publisher's name appears on Beale's list. And most of these are journals, but also some publishers and conferences. And we have to do this manually by comparing names because Bill doesn't give ISSN numbers. So we have to check one by one using the website if this is the same one. And of course, mistakes can happen. So I would advise for you if, if you use our search page to check also from Bill's list. So that's the most up-to-date information you get. Here I have a list of some characteristics of predatory journals. These are the kind of symptoms that uh, get me suspicious if I see them on a website. So similar or same title as well-known academic journals, fuzzy or broad scope, 
rapid, maybe meaning non-existing peer review process, as Jukka Majava said in his presentation. Then, according to Shen and Björk, uh, a study they made last year, uh, predatory open access journals might have lower APCs than other open access journals. They calculated that about 80 to 800 US dollars versus 900 to 1300 US dollars on average. Then other suspicious signs or busy websites with glowing ads and low quality graphics, lack of information on editorial board uh, or editorial staff or both, and contact information excessive use of words like scientific, academic, research, or using them in a, in a strange context. Massive spamming, as also Jukka said. Um, some so-called journals have little or no published content, so actually they're just websites. Uh, most often the country of publication is India, Nigeria, Pakistan, or international, so they don't want to give, give out the information where, where they're from, but the postal address might be somewhere in the US, Europe or Canada. And also they might use logos and names of well-known databases, some made-up metrics or made-up ESSNs that are not confirmed by the ISSN Center in Paris. And what's a bit confusing is that some of these publishers use the open journal system, which is a commonly used open source journal management and publishing system. For example, the Federation of Finnish Learned Societies use this system so it looks like any other normal journal. Here I have some screenshots from, uh, from the websites. So the example uh, above is seems quite normal. There, there is information about aims and scope, uh, instructions for authors and so on. But what caught my attention is the use of color and also Google-based impact factor, which I didn't know <laughs> what it means. And uh, when I started checking for it, I the first uh, websites that came to the results were predatory journals, and um, also when I checked Google, uh, Google's information, they on only had uh, information about the age index and some variations of it, so it's, it's not a Google service. And then there is uh, some ads about their new prices. Uh, one journal is uh, giving out information about its indexing. So it says it's indexed in directory of open access journals, which I checked and this is not true. Then it's indexed by Google. Well, that's nice. Um, then there is some uh, local, uh, local uh, institution and site factor, which is a fake metric, also listed by Bill. And then also an ad asking uh, researchers to join editorial board or being a reviewer. Um, publication form using Bill's list hasn't gone without some objections, so uh, we could sum up this in uh, four points. The first one being that we shouldn't use the blacklist based on one person's opinion. Second, we, uh, the journal we claim to be predatory is not really on Bill's list. Third one, uh, predatory journals shouldn't be accepted on level one at all. The fourth one, uh, multinational publishing houses that capitalize on research are hardly any better than predatory publishers. So here I have some comments on these points. First, um, I would say that Bill cannot list these journals and publishers without good arguments because there is a lot of attention and criticism and even lawsuits and threats against him. Um, so I think he might be quite cautious. 
Secondly, rewarding universities for articles that are not properly peer-reviewed is not in anyone's interest except for the publishers, of course, who get the money from either the universities or the researchers. Maybe predatory journals may prove especially harmful for young doctoral students seeking for a forum for their dissertation articles because then they might kind of waste their work if it's not recognized in uh, uh, an article in a predatory journal. Or there might be a surprise invoice that they get. They didn't know that it, they have to pay for publishing and then they get uh, a bill of $700 or something like that. The second point, journal is not on Bill's list. Well, uh, not every journal is listed separately on the list of standalone journals, but uh, instead a lot of them are on, only listed as publishers. So, for example, uh, the many hundreds of omics international journals have not been named one by one, but instead the publisher is only listed on the other list. And also, if uh, a journal is uh, removed from the list, um, you just maybe would like to inform us, because, as I said, this is manual work and our, our database is not always up to date. A third point, well, in the evaluation, Bill's list has no more weight than any other indicators. So it's not a given that if uh, a journal is on, on Bill's list or its publisher is on Bill's list, that it's automatically a level zero. So even if our criteria for level one says that panels don't have to accept these journals with uh, uh, questionable quality or relevance, there is a variation between the quality of journals within a, f a fleet of journals from one, one publisher. Uh, the last point, multinational publishing houses are hardly any better. Well, morally maybe not, but do you want to oppose them at the expense of the credibility, dissemination and long-term archiving of your results? Uh, and why risk publishing in a dubious journal if there are other good journals, including open access? Of course, it's the low prices and the, the speed of publication might be tempting, but uh, as in UCAS performance, uh, it was pointed out there might be other disadvantages. Then some figures based on our database information. Mm, currently, there are more than 700 predatory publication channels in our database. And of these, about 10% are on level one. Not nearly all are yet in our database, but more, more turn up all the time in every evaluation round. Um, in the beginning of last year, uh, we re reassessed all the predatory publication channels on level one, and a majority of them were dropped to level zero. And it might be comforting to know that only 1.6% of the articles produced by Finnish researchers between 2011 and 2013, uh, which is more than 66,000, were published in predatory journals. But then, Again, on the other hand, as we uh, went through the publication uh, data from last year, as much as 12% of the new journals were on Bill's list. So it seems that there are articles appearing in these journals all the time. Then a comparison between uh, those journals in our database, which are uh, indexed in Directory of Open Access Journals and Bill's List, the overlap is 30 journals, of which uh, 29 uh, are published by one single publisher, which actually is Frontiers. 
And so it seems that the OAJ is quite a good white list for open access journals. And also all of these 30 are on level one. Uh, here's some uh, figures from uh, the articles, publication types A1 and A2, so original articles and, and review articles in, uh, in scholarly journals. Two trends you can see, so uh, first of all, the total number of publications or articles is increasing every year, as well as the number of predatory articles. But there is uh, one exception to this trend. So here you can see that the articles published in uh, predatory level one journals is <coughs> increasing steadily, or has increased steadily until uh, 2014. But on the other hand, the number of predatory level zero articles has been decreasing a bit. So um, this uh, figure doesn't contain the re-evaluation of level one uh, predatory articles, so these are comparable figures. But of course, this is a short time span, so it's hard to make a very um, much. Uh, it's, it's, it's insufficient in that sense. So, uh, how to avoid predatory journals? Um, I would say that utilize and compare different lists side by side, so white lists and black lists. Um, there are different resources as um, Directory of Open Access Journals, of course, then Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association, its members, Bill's List, Web of Science or any other uh, database that does some kind of uh, quality checking. Then there is this uh, quality open access market, uh, which uh, is based on crowdsourcing. So uh, the idea is uh, to form a kind of SWOT analysis of journals. And it's, um, it might be a very good tool if uh, there were more participants. So people would give information and their, uh, their experiences of uh, publishing in journals. Uh, also, no list is perfect or completely up to date, so the comparing of the list is, is useful. And also, of course, always the best way and the fastest way is to read, uh, check the website and read a few articles to see if they're any good. If you uh, notice an un unmarked predatory journal or a mistake or have a, uh, first-hand experience of a suspicious publisher, you can give us a hint using uh, the e-form on our website, since there are other uh, unreliable publishers besides those listed by Bill and the panels would like to know if, if there is some, some kind of misconduct there. Mm. Yes, so if you have any questions, you can send us email and now I think we have a few minutes for, for questions. Yeah, thank you. So are there questions for Anna? Uh, uh, Tommy T is asking, in your opinion, is Peel's list transparent enough Meaning, can you find a detailed reasoning for each and every journal why it's included in the list? No, I don't think that he has reasoning for each and every journal. He, he has, um, in his blog, he has, um, he picks out some, uh, some of these and writes something, uh, arguments about why they are there, but not, not all of them. And that's one reason why it's only a, an indicator. But I think he goes through the list of his criteria. And if, if um, a publisher or journal meets some of the criteria, then it ends up in the, on the list. But yeah, it's a tool. 
Uh, I'm new in the system, so probably I don't know, but how we will know if it is a predatory one or if it is a new journal, journal that starts now? Mm, that's a <laughs> difficult question. Mm. It's hard to evaluate something that doesn't have any contents yet, so if you want to be on the safe side, and it's a completely unknown publishers. Maybe you don't want to send your article there, but um, of course there are signs like if you don't know the contact information or all the names are unknown, then it might be predatory. But if, uh, if some of the editorial board members are names that you know or something like that from your own field. Of course, you have to keep in mind that some of these predatory journals kind of steal the identity of uh, researchers and claim that they are working on their editorial board, even if it's not true. So some of these are completely uh, false, and some of these are like real journals, but they don't just um, you do a proper peer, peer review or something like that. So there is a kind of bit of variation between a predator and a predator. <laughs> okay, if, uh, if there is no further questions, I would like to make a, a short advertisement. <laughs> so um, the uh, Gotilava project uh, of uh, National Library in Finland and Federation of Finnish Learned Society is uh, organizing uh, a seminar uh, called um, uh, Publishers and Funders for Open Access in Finland and it's on 24th of May, so that might be interesting for you to attend to. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. <laughs>